Someone asked me a question about security consulting, salary ranges, remote work, that digital nomad lifestyle. So I'm going to be talking on that from the perspective of security consulting. For full transparency, I worked in security consulting for just under two years and I've been in cyber security for a little while now. So yeah, one of the most important things I'd say around security consulting is that you learn a lot you learn a ton. It's probably one of the best, most high intensity type of jobs you have. I think in security consulting, it's probably like five to 10 years of experience in one year because you're seeing so many different environments. You're working with so many different teams and people and infrastructure and types of setups. And it's crazy how valuable that is for your career because you're exposed to so many different organizations and parts of the industry that you just wouldn't have access to if you work for just one company. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. It's a very valuable and powerful thing to do to help your career and take it to the next level. So in terms of salary ranges, it can be anywhere between 30 and 200k just being honest i know that's a huge range but you know at the lower end you're probably just coming out of uni or you've been in cyber security or it for a little bit and someone's took the chance on you and you're working for a company you know they're not going to start you off on a huge salary so that's kind of the lower end of consulting now the highest end is typically the kind of skill set and the level of complexity and difficulty that is kind of very rare You know, these are your most experienced professionals or people who have spent a lot of time studying a very particular niche area. Also, if you're kind of business savvy and you've set up maybe a company or a consultancy and you're kind of freelancing in a certain way, you can make it way more profitable than working for an organization like one of the big four or something like that. So yeah important to keep that in mind now what i'll quickly say about the salary range and kind of money and consultancy in general is a skill set and demand changes depending on what's needed at a particular time so a few years ago just post covid business continuity consulting was huge they were getting paid stupid amounts of money if you understood business continuity consulting and especially pandemic planning within IT infrastructure and cyber security. That was a very niche skill before COVID, but after COVID, of course, it was very in demand. Every company needed to prepare for another pandemic and they needed help doing that the right way. So yeah, that kind of skill gap has now been filled and that's probably gone back to normal. Still a valuable skill, but you get what I'm saying in terms of specific times specific events almost trigger a certain skill set in a profession that suddenly shoots up in demand. Nowadays, it's a lot around cloud, cloud security, of course, incident response, all that good stuff. On-prem kind of network operations center type of jobs aren't as common as they used to be. They're still going to need that skill set. But I think back in the day where everyone was on-premise, that skill set was needed more widely. But now you kind of need the equivalent cloud skill set, which is kind of transferable with a few tweaks to the skills of knowledge required. But yeah, it's just important to keep in mind that it's good to pick like a bucket or an area you want to specialize in and be very careful about what you'd niche into. I would try and be a generalist until you really know you want to specialize in one area and it makes sense for you. So salaries range depending on those and other factors like your ability to negotiate, etc., etc. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you're on the sales side of consulting, which you typically pretty much are, you're kind of upselling or cross-selling products or trying to get the client to pay your company or yourself for more of your time you know the better you are at that the more money you can make as a consultant so yeah it's important to keep that in mind too in terms of remote work and the kind of digital nomad lifestyle this varies depending on what country you're in the data privacy and protection laws in place who you work for you know if you work for the military or the government you're probably not allowed to work on a beach on the other side of the world accessing you know government secrets and military secrets and data and whatever else like that typically doesn't happen most countries restrict any kind of government 
type of employee from leaving the country and working remotely, but they can work remotely from within the country if they've got a remote contract or a hybrid or whatever. So yeah, keep that in mind. Now, private organizations, again, they're subject to laws, normally less rigorous than, of course, government and military and blue light services, but they still have data protection law. And of course, it's various country to continent, depending on where you are. Some places are more flexible and some places are better to be remote in. For example, Asia, America are probably great areas to have that digital nomad remote lifestyle. Asia has so many different countries and cultures and places you can visit and if you're kind of unrestricted within that region that's quite a lot to explore. Same with America, it's a huge country just geographically. But if you're restricted to just one small country like the UK or England then yeah your options are limited to where you can travel but Europe having free reign is pretty cool but a lot of countries but then you've just got to think of time difference and you know you might have to work odd hours in that country to kind of meet the hours of the country that you work for or your company's based out of and it's also about the types of consultancy you do some consultancy jobs will not allow you to travel abroad at all full stop because you're working with very sensitive data you might have access to crazy like databases and things that they just don't want being accessed from abroad and some consultancy jobs just won't care because all you're doing is speaking to people and advising them on what to do you know actually doing anything but looking at a face and maybe a project plan shared on the screen so yeah depending on the types of consultancy you do will depend on the ability and of course who you work for the country and the continent that you're in now i know that's very nuanced but i'm just trying to answer the question from all angles but don't overcomplicate it just look at it on a case-by-case basis just think to yourself i'm going to work for x company what does x company allow and just look at it in that way typically you can ask the hr you can email email them and might even have it in the job description somewhere so you'll get all the information you need from there and you'll get a good understanding of how remote and how much of a digital nomad can you be with that job so that's the approach i hope that's kind of give you a little bit more information on salary ranges and remote work and the digital nomad lifestyle in cybersecurity consulting i know it's quite a nuanced topic we could have dived into a lot of these different verticals and unpacked some of them a little bit more but i just thought i'd give you a general understanding and hopefully that's helpful to you this was a comment and somebody asked this question so yeah if you've got any other questions and you know please feel free to just ask away in the comment section below and i'll probably make a video and answer them so yeah like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one